with two 10 gigabit ports plus 16 one gig ports, a full management interface and a form factor that's designed to fit in both full width as well as half width racks. There's a lot going on here and uh, this is a fairly inexpensive switch. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is the Microtech CSS 31816G 2S plus IN. And I managed to do that without even looking it up because I know exactly what it is based on that model number. The 318 tells us that we have a 18 port switch and then 18 ports has 16 one gig and then also two SFP plus ports. And it's an IM form factor, so it looks like this. Now the pricing on the switch is probably the first thing I wanna talk about because the list price of the switch is $139. But we're already starting to see e-tailers in that $107 to $115 range. Now, if you don't know this about Microtech products, usually the street price is significantly lower than the MSRP, but you'll see that when these things first go out, you'll see they sell like close to MSRP. And then after you know a couple of weeks or something like that, the price tends to get down to like a street price. And so I think that, you know, I, I look at this more like this is maybe a 110-ish dollar switch, not it's a, you know, $140 switch. And that's very important because frankly, on a switch that is in this price range, $30 is, uh, you know, is a lot of money, right? And instead of just saying that this switch is the best 10 inch rack switch, uh, we actually tested it on a bunch of different racks and found something really neat. So stay tuned for that. Now, I do wanna point out that Microtech sent us the switch. So we have to say it's sponsored because this we got before it was available in retail so we could make this video. But of course, like always, we get to say whatever the heck we want. Also, we're gonna show you this in some half width racks. We have a number of racks that we're gonna be doing a little series on. And I wanna say thank you to the STH YouTube members for helping support us so we can go and buy those racks. If you wanna support us, you can join down below. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so looking at the front of the switch, you can see that we have our 16 one gigabit ethernet ports. There's also our two SFP plus ports. So a couple things here. One, SFP plus ports, you can use adapters and adapt them to 10G base T. So if you wanna have a 10G base T port, you could go and put an adapter in. The other thing that is important here is that these 16 one gig ports, well, they're only one gig and they're vanilla one gig. So that means that we don't have two and a half gig, which is pretty popular these days. We also don't have PoE, which I think a lot of people would want in a one gig switch these days. So this is really a cost optimized switch. So it's kind of a lower cost switch and that kind of permeates the entire design here. Now, looking at the sides of our switch, you can see that we have vents. When we get to the back, we have vents and we have something that's a little bit different because we have our three prong adapter. And that means that we have an internal power supply here, which is really integrated. We'll get to that when we get inside the system. But that means that we also don't have an external power brick. So a lot of folks don't like the idea of having external power bricks. And so this kind of gets you around here. Now, moving to the top, it's sheet metal. Getting to the bottom, you'll see that we have these little rubber feet. We just put them on so it didn't scratch up the table. Now, when I say this is a very cost optimized design, let me give you a couple examples. And again, please comment if you like to see features. If you don't like to see features, Microtech reads these comments. So it's a good way to give them product feedback. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that we don't have a management port. In a lot of the Microtech switches that we see, we get a lower speed port that's really to go and manage the switch. Instead, it's all in-band management. So that means that, you know, you have management running on one of the NIC ports and you can VLAN it and all that kind of stuff. The other thing that is quite different is that this is a low power switch, but we don't have like a bunch of different ways to power it. Like Microtech switches, for whatever reason, have had just insane numbers of ways to power them. You can use PoE in, you can, you know, have the normal power brick. Sometimes there's a second power input, all kinds of things there, but this is relatively mundane. You just plug a cable in the back. Now, one external feature that I think is really good in this is just the rack mounting situation. So now we have this set up so you can go and put it on a desk. And frankly, it's a silent switch. So you can definitely have this sitting on your desk next to you and you're not gonna hear it or anything like that. But the other option, of course, is that this is a one U size switch and there could be smaller switches, but I actually like that it's one U because it gives us some mounting options. And Microtech doesn't make mounting options difficult. Instead, um, well, they have these right here. So these come together and you have to break them apart and I'll show you that in a sec. But the idea is that you have this side over here, which is for your half width mounting. And that could be either a half width chassis or a half width rack, or you could also do a side-by-side -side mounting. And then on the other side, you have your kind of full width rack where you have a you know kind of full size rack here. We have seen, just as a kind of fun thing, we have seen a couple switches that we've done reviews of on the STH main site where the rack gears are actually not 
long enough or wide enough to fit a full rack. So Microtech actually does that well. So we gotta give them a little bit of kudos for that. So what you do is uh, you just kind of bend and now you've popped these things apart. So I guess I just broke a kind of newly released Microtech switch, but I think you're supposed to break it like this. And so hopefully it's pretty obvious that this is like the half width rack version. And then this is the uh, full rack version. We're gonna show you this in a little bit. For now though, let's get inside the switch to see how this all works. Okay, so getting inside the switch, you're gonna see a fairly simple design. Now inside we have a Marvell Prestera 98DX2518, uh, which I think is a little bit older generation of a switch chip. But this Marvell Prestera 98DX25 series, this is really designed for this kind of like one gigabit ethernet plus some uplinks. So that's kind of really what, this is really the bread and butter of the switch chip here. But perhaps the more interesting thing is that the power supply is actually built into the overall switch board. So if you look up top, you can see where the AC input goes into the board. And then you can see we have our AC DC converter and all that kind of stuff on the top. And so this is kind of a little bit different than a lot of other even Microtech switches with internal power supplies because the power supply is built into the switchboard rather than being something that sits also alongside the switchboard in the chassis. So that means, frankly, if you are going to replace power in this board, you're probably just replacing the entire switch. I don't think 99% of people are gonna care about that, but because we've been reviewing these switches for so long, it kind of sticks out whenever there's something new like that. Overall inside, there's not a ton going on because we don't have PoE, we don't have things like 10G base T or anything like that that would make it a little bit spicier in here. Instead, we just kind of have a pretty van vanilla package if we're being honest. But earlier in this video, I mentioned two things. One, that this is a you know half width or a 10 inch rack capable switch. And I also mentioned that this is a CSS, which means that instead of the Marvell Prestera running uh, router OS, we have switch OS. So with that, I figure let's go and uh, let's dig into those. Now, what are the big differences between the CSS 318 and some of the CRS switches that we've reviewed is that instead of running router OS by default, this uses switch OS. In fact, it's really designed to only run switch OS. Now, if you don't know the difference, router OS is Microtik's kind of more fully featured. I mean, it has all kinds of stuff like you set up VPNs and I mean, you name it, there's pretty much those features are all in router OS. But when you talk about switch OS, it's really a more simplified experience designed for really running lower end switches like this one. So instead of having massive numbers of features, there are things like being able to set up VLANs or port isolation, link aggregation, RSTP, and those types of things. Now, of course, you can go dive into SwitchOS if you just kind of want to look at it. And I would say that in terms of how it is, it's definitely nowhere near as fully featured as a router OS, but there are some features that definitely differentiate this versus some of the lower cost switches that we see on the market. A great example of that is when we get to updating. If you want to update the system, you can automatically check for an update or you can do a manual file update. And there are actually updates that happen to SwitchOS pretty regularly. We have reviewed switches where you don't necessarily see regular updates. The updates are, if you can get them, are a pain to apply and you have to go find them from somewhere. This is much easier to manage. And there's even little tiny features like the ability to read your SFP information directly from the switch. Now it's really interesting when we look at STH readers and those that watch on YouTube, some folks absolutely love router rest because there's tons of features, even if you can't necessarily use them all or at least use them all at line rate. On the other hand, there are other folks that just love SwitchOS because it's super simple and it's just easy to use. And I kind of can see both sides of it. I'm personally probably more of a router OS fan, but I know that there are a lot of folks even on our team that like SwitchOS. The other thing though that I don't like about SwitchOS, and let me just kind of get this out here, is that to get into the interface these days, what you do, even on this switch right here, is you put in the IP address and then you put in admin as the username and no password, and that logs you in. The weird thing is that there's no prompt to say, hey, you have to change it. There's also no default password. So usually you do see a default password on Microtik devices, but there's not even a you know, randomized one. It's not even just like the serial number, or just something. It's literally just blank. And so you can log into the switch, update the firmware, log back out of it and log in again. And uh, you're still using admin with no password, which is not super secure for a 2025 device. I just think that they should be using randomized passwords. I know they're a pain for a lot of folks, but on the other hand, 
a lot of people will install this, have it go to WAN and not put a password on it, which is silly. And so we really need to have at least a random password. And just really quickly on the power consumption of the switch. Now, when it's idle, you're gonna see in that maybe three to four watt range, we have some things attached to it right now, like the SFPs that are connected. So it's a little bit higher at about six watts with three ports and two SFPs connected. Now, Microtech's maximum specs for this is that the switch will use up to 10 watts without attachments, but when you start plugging SFPs and all the different ports in, you can get up to about 13 watts. And so it's not a super high power switch, but it's also not the lowest power switch out there. So earlier I mentioned this might be the most perfect half-width switch that Microtech made, but there are some caveats. So first off, uh, we showed you that they have, uh, you know, the rack gears that are full 19 inch rack gears. So you just put these on very easy. Um, and then, well, things get a little bit interesting once you put the smaller rack gears on. So the kind of cool thing is that you get both, right? So if you want to put a 19 inch rack, you got these. If you want to do something bigger, you have your 10 inch half width rack ones. Um, but you know, there are some challenges and let me just kind of show you an example of that. This is the, I think Despi uh, half width rack and you can see that it works no problem until you get it all the way kind of back here. It actually doesn't fit on this side. That was kind of sad, but then we flipped it over and this is the funny thing. So on the 10 inch rack, if you flip this over to the other side, it actually fits no problem. Now we have a whole bunch of these small 10 inch racks. So we started saying like, okay, well, what if we go try other ones? And here's another example. We'll have reviews of all of these, I think on the STH main site. I don't think we're gonna do a video on them, but um, you know, here's another one that is really cool because it has a glass case, it's locking, it has adjustable depth, all that kind of stuff. But um, we found out that we could not fit it into the rack when it came from the factory. But of course, because the mounting is adjustable, you have screws that keep the mounting bits in place. And the challenge with that is that I think Thor himself managed to go and tighten these in place. And so it actually took the, the mounting rails and pushed them in and there goes the door. But the rails are pushing just that little bit too much to where we couldn't fit this little tiny switch in there. So kind of a fun one is that the answer was we had to go and untighten those screws and then that let us push apart the mounting rails just enough to allow us to get this in. And that kind of brings me to the point I guess I'm trying to make on this, which is when you make 10 inch rack gear, frankly, these different solutions have different widths, right? I mean, this worked except if you over tighten it, then it doesn't work on the desk pie side, it worked on the front, but not the rear. And so it's just one of those things where, you know, we've seen in a number of these 10 inch racks that the actual mounting width is not exactly the same in every single one. And the challenge with that is it just means that, well, I mean, you know, if, if you're micro taking and you're trying to make it, you say like, oh, there's a standard, it has to be this big, but in applications, or at least practically when you go install stuff, all of a sudden you notice that like, you know, you don't have maybe a couple millimeters that you need. And so I think that the micro tech guys actually have already thought of this in a way, because you'll notice that of course, like most rack gears, these are not just like little tiny holes that are drilled, but instead there's a little bit of play in how you mount the rack bolts. And I think that what they need is just to make this chassis a little tiny bit shorter just to give you a little bit more room. Because if you were building this and you're building a smaller rack, we have some larger ones too that you know we'll do in the series. I think we have like five or six of them so far. And then a whole bunch of accessories for half racks. We'll be doing that on the main site. But the big thing that I noticed when we were kind of going through them is that this was not a uncommon problem. So I think that Microtech needs to make this device just a little bit shorter and then make up the variance with their rack ears. That to me would solve the problem of like not fitting in this one and fitting only on one of the sides here. The other challenge I think is a little bit more profound. And that challenge is frankly, having 16 ports and two uplink ports is great. But if you have something like a little 6U rack or maybe something a little bit larger, but in any case, a lot of these 10 inch racks tend to be pretty small and fitting 16 devices plus having two uplinks to either a higher speed NAS that's sitting there or something outside of the network. I mean, that's frankly a lot for a little box like this, right? There's just not that many things that you're gonna plug in realistically to a little tiny rack when you only have six U of space to work in. Now, of course, if you have a lot of Raspberry Pis, sure, maybe, but even if you look here where we have things like the NVIDIA Jetson Orens, um, you know, those things are just too big to fit a ton of them, or at least 16 of them, into a little tiny rack like this. So I think the other challenge is just, this might actually be too much switch 
for something that's too small. And also, if you have mini PCs, then you're gonna want two and a half gig ethernet, so you're probably not gonna use this anyway. But at the same time, it's hard to argue that this is probably one of the coolest switches that you can get for a 10 inch rack. Now, from a performance perspective, let's just show you Microtech's numbers. And this is their chart on their results. And then we just have our setup. They have fancier equipment than we do, frankly. So just wanted to kind of show you both versions, our version, as well as theirs. And overall for a one gig switch, this is exactly what we would expect. Okay, so with all these videos, I love to have a key lessons learned. And frankly, I love the idea of Microtech having something that's specifically designed to fit either in a 10 inch rack or a 19 inch rack. You can pick, you can do either one. I know a lot of folks are getting very excited about the 10 inch racks. Personally, I'm still probably a small 19 inch rack fan just because, um, well, I just have grown up with 19 inch probably and that's probably why. But on the other hand, you know, the fact that they're making something that fits in that form factor, I think that's great, right? That just gives you more options and it's nice. Okay, here's the thing and please comment on this because Microtech reads the comments and tell them what you want down there because that'll help them make better products. Here's my thing. In 2025, if you give me one gigabit per second ports, what is that good for? Really, I'm not running my PoE stuff off of here because I need another injector and I'd rather just have it all on a switch, frankly. On the other hand, if I have a new mini PC, all the new mini PCs that we have and most of the motherboards that are out there, they're all like two and a half gig ethernet, if not faster. So this isn't really, I guess, designed for like new PCs. It's not really designed for all that PoE lower speed stuff. Wi-Fi APs these days, again, probably better to have PoE number one and number two. They tend to be needing two and a half gig or faster, especially as we get into the Wi-Fi seven generation. So this might be like a really good management switch. Also, if you have like old Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes where you only have one gig ethernet, or you have a whole bunch of not the high speed networking that you use for storage and clustering, but the lower speed like management interfaces for like OSs and stuff. Um, that's another good use case for one gig, but one gig in 2025 just kind of feels, I don't know, it kind of feels slow, right? I kind of wish that this was a two and a half gig ethernet switch. And I'm just gonna go and say that right now. The other option though, is that if it's not gonna be a two and a half gig switch, I frankly would have liked to see a PoE version of the switch before the one gig version, because all of a sudden that would allow me to go and do things like run a entire PoE, I don't know, camera setup or something off of a small switch, even if it was a little bit deeper, I think that would be great. But again, please let me know your thoughts in the comments because I could be totally off base here. So I also just wanna talk really quickly about where this is made because that's a little bit different than a lot of the switches that we review and from a bunch of different vendors because while there are a lot of US companies that make their switches in places like China, a lot of folks just wanna know are there options that don't involve China? So this is a Latvian company, which is in Europe if you don't know where Latvia is, and it also is made in Malaysia. So that's a little bit different than a lot of the switches that we see that are either Chinese companies making Chinese switches, US companies making switches in China or Mexico, um, you know, this is just a different option. Now, while this is not the cheapest switch out there, that 110, 115 bucks, sure, I get it. I totally get the value proposition of something like this. And I'd love to hear what you guys think. So if you like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.